Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus charged us with the responsibility to share the good news. Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie points out it's the perfect time to do it. We are the first generation that could literally get the gospel to pretty much everyone. So here's a challenge I have for you. Would you take the gospel to people who have offended you or people you're not comfortable with or people you don't even necessarily want to be with? Give them the gospel. This is the day when the lost are found. This is the day for a new beginning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Again you hear all the angels are singing. This is the day, the day when life begins. If you find a great restaurant or see a good movie, chances are you're not shy in mentioning it to someone else. We like to pass on helpful suggestions, but so many of us just don't feel comfortable in suggesting someone consider the hope of the gospel. We'll talk about that reluctance today on A New Beginning, as Pastor Greg Laurie continues his series in the Book of Acts. We'll learn to follow the example of our first century forefathers and discover the thrill of spreading the good news. Grab your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 10. And the title of the message is Never Say Never. Think about this for a moment. We are the first generation that could literally fulfill the Great Commission in our lifetime. Think about that. Because of all of the technology that we have today, we could literally get the gospel to pretty much everyone on the planet. But that's a big project. We can just stop and think about our own life and going into our own world. So the book of Acts, it's the work of the Holy Spirit that happened through the lives of ordinary people. It was the Spirit of God working through the Word of God in the hearts of the people of God. And it was said of them that they turned their world upside down. Well now in the book of Acts we have sort of a shifting of the gear, if you will, and there's a change in the strategy of the church where they now seem to get a better understanding of the simple fact that they were to take the gospel to everyone. Everyone needed to hear it, not just the people that they were personally comfortable with. Also before us here in Acts is a story of a man who was searching for God. He was a true seeker of God. And if a person is really seeking God, God will make himself known to them. God promises in Jeremiah 29, 13, you'll seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart and I will be found by you. And the name of this man was Cornelius and he was a centurion. And uh, this is a pivotal moment with his conversion because now the church is gonna leave not just bringing the gospel to their fellow Jews, but to non-Jews or Gentiles as well. To go out there and impact everybody. Acts chapter 10, starting at verse one. And by the way, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout man. He feared the God of Israel, as did his entire household. He gave generously to charity and was a man who regularly prayed to God. One afternoon, around three o'clock, he had a vision and he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius stared in terror. What is it, sir? Which, by the way, when an angel appears, it's a good idea to call him sir, right? And though Cornelius is a powerful leader of others, He knows greater power when he sees it. And the angel replies, your prayers and gifts to the poor have not gone unnoticed by God. Now send some men down to Joppa to find a man named Simon Peter. He's staying with Simon, a leather worker who lives near the shore. Ask him to come to visit you. So we'll stop there. Looping back now to Cornelius. He's a centurion. By the way, it was not easy to become a centurion. They commanded 300 to 600 troops. 
uh, the, one of the historians of the day named Polybius described centurions as men who were not so much the venturesome daredevils as they were natural leaders known for their steadfastness and dependability in the heat of battle. So Cornelius, he's a leader. He's uh, an intelligent man. He's a level-headed man. He's a respected man. And like most Romans of his day, he would worship Roman gods. They had many gods that they would bow before, Jupiter, Mars, Venus. Many of them would even worship Caesar as a deity. So this was the world he lived in, but he knew this was not the answer. Something about the Jewish people and their worship of the one true God fascinated him. They were monotheistic. They worshiped one God. He was polytheistic. He worshiped many gods. He was drawn, but he didn't really know how to believe quite yet. He was a true seeker, and God was about to make himself known to this man. Now here's what I find interesting. An angel appears to him and says, go talk to Peter. You're gonna get the answers to all of your questions. Why didn't the angel just give him the gospel? Because the job of angels is not to preach the gospel. That's our job. Our job is to preach the gospel. How can they believe in him unless they've heard about him? How can they hear unless someone tells them? Asks Paul in Romans 10, 14. So here we have Cornelius and the Lord's getting him ready. Meanwhile, back in Joppa, we have Simon Peter. God's prepping him. He's getting these guys ready to meet each other. It's gonna be an explosive moment in church history and in the strategy of the church. Peter is sitting on the rooftop of the home of a guy named Simon the Tanner. That doesn't mean that he laid down and got tans all the time. That <laughs> means that he had uh, hides of uh, leather and such. And so he was a leather worker, if you will. And, and Peter is hungry. Acts 10 now, go over to verse nine. The next day as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the city, Peter's up on the flat roof to pray. It's around noon. He's hangry, hungry. He was hungry, not hangry. Uh, and while lunch is being prepared, he fell into a trance. And he saw the sky open and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. And in the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. And then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. Verse 14, never, Lord, Peter declared. I have never in all of my life eaten anything forbidden by our Jewish laws. The voice spoke again and said, if something God says is acceptable, don't say it isn't. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, this would be like a very health conscious person having a sheet or a sail or a picnic blanket, if you like, lowered from heaven with all of the foods that you are not supposed to eat. You know, In-N-Out burger, Chipotle burritos, nachos with extra cheese, pizza. By the way, I just named all of my favorite foods, literally right there. You just <laughs> heard them all. And you know, and saying, eat, oh, I can't eat that. I'm into healthy foods. Or it'd be like me, having a sheet lowered from heaven filled with wheat germ and kale and, and uh, tofu and things of that nature, right? And so, but the idea here is this is not about food. This is about people. This sheet with all of these critters that were on it is a metaphor that God is giving to Peter and he's saying leave your comfort zone and go to a new group of people, specifically the Gentiles. It's great to have you with us on A New Beginning with Pastor Greg Laurie. We're in Acts chapter 10 today as Pastor Greg challenges us about the importance of sharing the gospel. It's a message titled, Never Say Never. You know, we're in a time in the church now where I I see, I don't think division is ever necessary, but I see people dividing over really small things. Uh, Second tier, even third tier things. And, And your group gets narrower and narrower. It's down to pretty much us four and no more, and I'm not sure about you other three, right? And and this is not the time to divide. This is the time to unify and get back to our primary mission that God has given to us. When a secular culture sees a divided church, they don't care about what we say. And here's what Paul reminds us of in Ephesians 4.3. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together 
with peace. And so make every effort to get along with people. Make every effort to not divide from people. And uh, it's interesting that this happened in a place called Joppa. Does Joppa ring a bell with any of you Bible students? Of course, you remember the story of Jonah. And God called Jonah to take uh, God's message to the people of Nineveh who were renowned for their wickedness and cruelty. And Jonah flat out refused and he got a boat going in the opposite direction from a little place called Joppa. I've been to Joppa. It's a seaport in Israel. And uh, it's a beautiful little spot actually. And so there at Joppa, Jonah ran from God. You know the rest of the story. A great storm came and he was thrown overboard and swallowed by a great fish. Ultimately he repented and was given a second chance and went to Nineveh and preached to them and a great spiritual awakening broke out. But it's interesting, it's Joppa. Joppa is the place where God was directing Jonah and now Peter to go to people they were not necessarily comfortable with. So here's a challenge I have for you. Would you take the gospel to people who have hurt you? Would you take the gospel to people who have offended you? Would you take the gospel to people who have mistreated you or people you're not comfortable with or people you don't even necessarily want to be with? Let me illustrate it from my own life. Uh, as you know, my mom was married and divorced seven times. And she was an alcoholic and went from husband to husband. And there were a lot of boyfriends in between. And I went along, her name was Charlene. I was on Charlene's wild ride. You've heard of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I was on Charlene's Wild Ride. And so after I came to Christ, I pretty much had a full-time ministry sharing the gospel with my old dads. I'll put them in quotes. Some were successful. I was able to share the gospel with Oscar Laurie, the man who adopted me and whom my mom left. And, uh, and I was able to lead him to the Lord. Uh, toward the end of his life. That was fantastic. Well, my mom leaves Oscar. I get out of my classroom and the Cadillac is loaded with a bunch of luggage and we're on our way to Hawaii to meet my, quote, new dad who I'd never heard of before. Well, he too was an alcoholic and a violent drunk. And one night they got in a fight and he took out a wooden statue and hit my mother, knocked her unconscious. She landed on the floor I came out of my room as a little boy and saw my mom lying in a pool of blood and he was holding the statue up in a menacing way. And I remember it, it was such a weird statement. He said, go back to bed, she's fine. It's just ketchup. Well, I knew what it was. And I climbed out the window of our house and went to a neighbor and the police were called, but she left him, understandably. So now fast forward, I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor, and I'm preaching in Honolulu, and someone comes up to me and says, hey, your dad is very sick. I don't know how long he's going to live. Maybe you should go talk to him. And I said, no thank you. Why did I say no thank you? Because he hurt my mother. I had a hard heart against this man. Even as a Christian, I wanted nothing to do with him. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, go talk to him. So I went. And I sat down with him and I told him all about Jesus and what Jesus had done for me. And he was like, yeah, well, that's good. Well, I'm preaching across the street here, literally across the street from where you live at this place called Waikiki Show. Would you like to come? No, he wanted nothing to do with it. But here's my point. I've never converted anyone. My job was to obey God. And I went to him and did what God wanted me to do. Is there a guy like that in your life right now? Maybe it is your father. Maybe it's a stepfather, your mom, a stepmother. Somebody else said, you're so hard against right now. Go to them with the gospel. That's effectively what Peter was being commanded to do. And so he obeyed the Lord. Unlike Jonah, who went the wrong way but got rerouted and eventually got it right, Peter did immediately what God called him to do. Go to Acts 10 verse 24. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for him and called together his relatives and close friends to meet Peter. Peter entered his home and Cornelius fell to the floor before him in worship. Peter pulled him up and said, stand up, I'm a human being like you. Cornelius got up and they talked together and went inside and where the others were assembled 
And Peter said, you know it's against the Jewish laws for me to come into a Gentile home like this, but God has shown me that I should never think of anyone as impure, so I came as soon as I was sent for. Tell me now why you sent for me. <laughs> Such an amazing story. God's getting both of these guys ready. The Roman centurion bows before him, which is pretty amazing. I mean, the centurion, an officer in the Roman army, the occupier is bowing before the occupied, the Jewish people. And this was a great act of humility, but it was really an act of worship. Peter says, get up on your feet, man. I'm just an ordinary human being just like you. But now Peter's getting it. Okay, okay, Lord, I think I've got to figure it out. I'm putting two and two together, the sheet, all the weird creatures, kill and eat. This is the Gentile. I'm supposed to go to Gentiles. I got it. All right, Lord. And Peter preaches the gospel to Cornelius. And the result was he is converted. Think of what God can do to the life of one person. Pastor Greg Laurie with great encouragement today on what God can do if we'll follow his leading. And there's more to come in this message here on A New Beginning in this study titled Never Say Never. Well, we've been considering the importance of sharing the gospel today. And no doubt there's someone listening who needs to come to the Lord today. Well, here's Pastor Greg with some additional thoughts to share. Maybe as you've been listening to this message, you've thought, I wish I could come into this relationship with God. I just don't know how. Let me tell you how you can come into a relationship with God right here, right now. First of all, you need to recognize you need God. You need to admit you're a sinner. I know some people choke on that word, but the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then you need to recognize that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for your sin. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then you need to believe in Jesus. Jesus put it this way, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You might ask, how does one believe in Jesus? To believe means to put your faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone and to receive him into your life as your own friend, Savior, and Lord. The Bible says, for as many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Would you like to receive Christ? And by that I mean, would you like to ask Jesus to enter into your life and be your Savior, your friend, your Lord? If so, you can just pray this prayer after me. It's a simple prayer. You can pray it out loud if you would like, or you could pray it in the quietness of your heart. But if you want Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin, if you want to go to heaven when you die, or maybe you want to make a recommitment to the Lord, just pray this prayer after me now. Pray these words if you would. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you're the Savior who died on the cross for my sin. I turn now from my sin, and I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of all of my sin. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for hearing this prayer. And thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to congratulate you and say, welcome to the family of God. Yeah, and would you let us help you get started living this new life? Let us send you our New Believers Growth Pack. It's a collection of resources that'll answer many of the questions that you might have and help you walk each day with God. Just call and ask for a New Believers Growth Pack on 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. And the team would love to pray with you too. Call 1-800-772-936 today. Well, next time on A New Beginning, more insight on the importance of sharing the gospel, even with those outside our comfort zones. This is the day, the day when life begins. 
Today's message from Pastor Greg Laurie was called Never Say Never. If you'd like to listen again, just download the free Vision Christian Media app where it's available as a podcast, along with more inspiring Christian content. Just search your app store for Vision Christian Media. Station sponsor. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.